Hello everyone, today I wanted to show a test that I ran to do two-sided machining without any fixturing while still maintaining good alignment between the two sides. This will be useful for my pinball playfield and cabinet projects since I will be machining both sides with stock material and I do not have any reference rulers or straight edges on my machine. I'm using CamBam as a CAM G-code generator because it is simple and straightforward and I'm not doing any fancy machining here. I start out with my 11 by 42 inch scrap board and I will bore four holes in it. One will be a reference hole, one will be a target hole so I can measure rotation relative to the reference hole, and the other two I am using just to measure how good the alignment is when we are done. I am machining these all the way through the half inch thick board. So let's take that to the machine and cut it. That went just fine, so now let's set up the second side. For this, we're going to set the origin on the original reference hole, keeping in mind that we flip the board vertically. I'm going to machine slightly larger diameter holes in three of the hole locations. These holes will only be machined part way through the board so we can compare the alignment with the previous operation. Then I created a G-code header that imports a measured rotation and tells the machine to perform a coordinate system rotation throughout the machining operation. Back to the machine, I flip the board over and intentionally place it so that it is at an angle to prove that my center finding and rotation macros are doing what they are supposed to. I install a touch probe in the spindle and then use a custom G-code macro to find the center of the reference hole. The center finding routine finds the center multiple times and does not stop until the two consecutive reads are less than a half a thousandth apart to ensure the reading has sufficiently converged. The diameter of the hole is also measured for reference. We set the center of that hole to be our origin. Then I use another macro to find the center of the target hole. The angle and distance from the reference hole is automatically calculated and stored. We can now open the G-code for the second side and start it. It shows how it thinks it should rotate the coordinate system and displays the error in the measured distance between the reference and target holes versus the ideal distance that was set up in the file. If that all looks good, we can start the cut. Oh, and don't forget to remove the touch probe and install a cutting bit. Great, everything looks okay, so let's measure and see how we did. For each of the three holes, I measured the center of the large hole, which is ideally 0.4375 inches in diameter, set the origin to that point, then measured the center of the smaller hole, which is ideally 0.375 inches in diameter, just below it. Okay, I admit, fractions in the imperial system are dumb and make for awful decimals. Oh well. The result tells us how far off the side A machining is from the side B machining. Here are the results. Everything was within eight thousandths. I was hoping for five thousandths, but this is still pretty good. Also keep in mind there is likely measurement error due to the fact that I am using crummy particle board for this test. When I probed the particle board, I could be hitting a slight void or burr in the wood product which would appear as a misalignment even if the overall holes were aligned perfectly. I'm still very happy with the results and it was interesting to learn how to write G-code macros to solve this alignment problem. I will be using this method moving forward in my projects. It's low impact to add these reference holes to my parts and even if I have certain parts where I can't add the reference holes, I can always add the reference holes to the off cuts where there are no parts on the wood. I hope you found this interesting, and if you have a CNC machine, I hope this gave you some ideas. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Burp, burp, burp.
Burr, burr.